Bible 7, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven, that means yeast. The little yeast will make the whole loaf. It don't take much. It don't take much to throw you off. We did run well. How many, back when we started the 622, how many times did we have 30, 40 young people and we had church for three hours? I was there. I seen it happen. Praise and worship God for two and a half hours before Brother Jeremy even started preaching. He preached and then we praise God for another hour. We did run well. Who hindered us? I don't think anybody did. We hinder ourselves. When we choose not to stand. In Proverbs it says, Without, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. What's that got to do with this? I'll tell you. Vision in that verse means revelation. Where there is no revelation, the people perish. How do you get revelation? You get it for yourself. Mommy and Daddy's Holy Ghost ain't going to carry a young person. It don't matter what kind of heritage you got. Grandma and Grandpa could have been in this thing. Could have passed it all the way down to you. They pass it down to you. That's all fine and good. But it don't mean anything until you decide to stand on it for yourself. all to come to the altar. I'm not going to you know, I'm not going to do that or whatever, but the altar is open. We're going to sing another song. We're going to hear from Brother Jeremy here in a little bit, but right now, if you want to make up in your mind tonight that you are going to stand no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, no matter who's talking about you, no matter who's going behind your back, no matter who doesn't like you, no matter if mom and dad are in this thing, no matter if they don't come to church anymore, no matter if your brothers and sisters are in this thing anymore. If you're the only one that's doing what you need to be doing, stand anyway. One more example, Elijah, one of the greatest men of God in the Bible. We know the story. Prophets of Baal, there's about 400 something of them. Elijah's the only one in that group out of those people living for God. He challenges them. He said, hey, we'll build an altar. I'll build an altar. Whosoever God consumes the offering, that's who's God, is God. We know the story. Prophets fail. They do their thing. Nothing happens. Elijah prays a 63 or whatever word of prayer. God sends fire from heaven, consumes the whole thing, the water, the rocks, everything. Then right after that, he goes down by the brook and he packs them all in the little pieces. Great victory. But right after that, we find Elijah running for his life because Jezebel spit out a threat. Running for his life. He finds a tree. He sits down. He's like, God, why don't you just kill me now? It's not even worth it. I'm the only one there is. I'm the last one doing anything right. Why don't you just take me now, God? I'm, I'm done with this. He falls asleep. The angel comes, puts a little loaf of bread by him and says, Elijah, arise and eat. Gets up, he eats, falls back to sleep. Second time, Elijah, arise and eat. You know what this thing here is? This is the bread of life, young person. I don't care what situation you're facing. It is time to arise and eat. How many times is it going to take to arise and eat before we do and then go where God wants us to be? First thing the angel said wasn't, Elijah, go over there and preach to these people. No, first thing is, arise, young person. Arise. Stand. Amen. I'm done. If anybody wants to make up their mind tonight that they're sick and tired of coming, you know, doing the whole circle thing, come to the altar, cry, go out in the world, do whatever, come back and cry again someday. Anybody's tired of that? Anybody wants to decide tonight that they're going to stand no matter what happens? Here's the altar. You know where to find God.